The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of KSMQ Public Service Media Incorporated or its assigns. Welcome to the Heart of the Matter. I'm your host, Stephanie Passingham. Recycling is a feel-good action that diverts waste away from landfills. But then what? On today's program, we explore whether recycling works. What happens to our pop cans when they leave the curb? Recycling can take many forms, from curbside pickup to simply donating your children's outgrown clothes to a friend. Captain Brixen from the Salvation Army, Julie Ketchum from Waste Management, and Greg Nelson from Use Again describe the many options for retail recycling. Recycling is something we hear a lot about, something that we're supposed to do, but what is the value of recycling? Recycling is valuable for a variety of reasons. Uh, first, from an environmental standpoint, just the extracting the value out of the waste stream. Instead of throwing it away, you're uh, taking valuable materials out, whether it's paper or cardboard or plastic, uh, aluminum, all of those materials have value. And so just from a pure um, environmental standpoint, take, getting that out of the waste stream, recycling it, um, it, it saves energy uh, from the standpoint. Uh, waste management, uh, you know, it, it means uh, uh, generating revenue for our company. It's, it is a commodity for us. Uh, so we're out there in our communities, working with communities and our businesses residents trying to mine that material, get it out of the waste stream, and uh, we um, then sell it as, as commodity. And in some cases, recycling can be a social good as well. You know, we were kind of drawn into uh, the need to recycle just in general because of the, the uh, waste stream that the Salvation Army's thrift stores uh, could produce over a, a given period of time. Um, uh, you know, we've had some conversations uh, with, with uh, waste management. We've, we've tried to create through their treating or their teaching uh, a process to where we can lower our waste, our waste stream out through the dumpster and still be able to uh, uh, make some income for uh, secondary income, we could call it for our thrift stores or our family stores, mm -hmm. um, and, and keep our bills a little bit lower. Instead of sending mm -hmm. you know, three dumpsters a week out, we may only send one dumpster out, but we have instead, we, we now recycle metal and clothes and we recycle uh, cardboard and paper. So uh, it, it, economically for us to, to keep in business, to be able to help the community as much as we can, it was we were almost driven into making sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. What level of recyclable goods are really in good shape that can be used again by someone else? Do you have a sense of what that balance is? Well, in the, the products that uh, you know we deal with uh, use textiles, mainly clothes and shoes. Um, Probably 90% of it is reusable that we collect. Okay. Uh, so it is reused by someone, um, you know, whether it's here in the United States or abroad, mm -hmm. everything we collect, 90% um, of it's reused, about 10% of it is recycled, uh, ground up and made into other products, whether it's uh, insulation or carpet padding, those types of things. So uh, I'm not sure about, you know, you collect obviously aluminum and glass and paper and those things um, with waste right. management, I'm not sure there, but as far as textiles, it's 90 percent. Uh, we have a, have a very high recovery rate and primarily due to the work that we do with our customers, our residential customers, our commercial customers. You know, we really work with them uh, like the Salvation Army and ensure that that material that we're getting is clean. So mm -hmm. really about 95 percent just generally of the material that comes to our Twin Cities uh, recycling facility is recycled and we have a variety of end markets mm -hmm. for that material. Okay. As far as our, the, a lot of the goods, uh, probably about 80% of stuff that we sell out of our family store in, in Freeborn County is clothes, shoes, uh, mm -hmm. uh, mostly women's clothes is a, is a, a big, because guys wear them out. Ladies wear them a couple times, and it doesn't match their purse anymore. So uh, we get a, our, our big sales are women's clothes. But uh, as far as our clothes and shoes, belts, hats, stuff like that, uh, we're at a, a, a we throw nothing of that away. None of that goes in the waste stream. It all goes once we go through our system. Uh, the, the products are sold through our store or vouchered out to 
uh, somebody that right. may uh, may have have a client that came and then moved in with children that may need something. So that's voucher yeah. for free. So it's either given away for free, mm -hmm. uh, or it's sold in the store to help continue to run the store, or right. we sell all of our goods at the end of a four-week rotation for, mm -hmm. for profit back to the store to keep mm -hmm. our store running. Any helpful hints or, or tips or advice that you would give to folks since much of this material is actually being reused for its original purpose, just for someone else, what would you tell them about prepping whatever it is that they bring in or how can they pre-sort or, you know, Salvation Army gets a ton of stuff dropped off and you've got a lot to go through. What are the keys that people should look for when they're cleaning out their closet or their garage or? We like to make sure that it's in clean and usable shape, but even if it's not in usable shape, we can still, you know, there's still a secondary market for rags. I think the biggest thing that, that we are plagued with and, and probably the drop box as well is people dropping them off and not, not putting them away properly. Then it rains and it gets mm -hmm. wet. And once it gets wet, it's really tough to deal with okay. uh, and makes kind of a mess. So we try to, to just maintain, try to keep uh, from having the stuff pushed all over the place. Right. Yeah, I mean, you make a good point. I mean, we ask that they put them in a plastic bag and, and deposit them into our bins. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, um, you know, will leave it laying outside or something. And if it does it rain, it does rain. You know, it, it's tough to recover those. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the ones that get then. shredded, then I suppose. Exactly, um, because for us to put it into a, you know, we bale all of our stuff, uh, like you had mentioned, you know, in thousand pound bales, and you know, it's going to get moldy. It's going to destroy the other mm -hmm. clothes that are with it. So mm -hmm. we have to keep those separated, separate. and they're really not reusable at that point. Is there a tipping point at all for recycling? We we think of it as a good thing to do. We all want to make the world more sustainable. At what point, or is there a point where the effort to recycle consumes more energy, costs more time, labor, than the benefit that you get from it? I guess I don't know if there's a point that, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's too much effort or too much cost. Um, I, I guess, you know, I think it's real important uh, for everyone to uh, keep recycling in the forefront of their mind, no matter what it is they're trying to dispose of. Um, you know, I don't know a lot of statistics on some of the other products you collect, but with, with clothing, um, the average consumer um, in the United States consumes about 80 pounds a year of clothing. Currently, mm -hmm. only 15% of that is being collected. 85% is still going into the landfills. Um, so, I, you know, I think our goal together and, and other companies like ours is to make an impact into that other 85%. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing from the standpoint of, of manufacturing clothing, cotton is one of the most harmful things on the environment uh, when oh. it comes to manufacturing. Okay. Um, the CO2 gases uh, produced in manufacturing a, a t-shirt is more harmful than, than plastic and paper and uh, anything but right? aluminum. And so again, it's due to the energy requirement exactly. to harvest cotton. And okay. And when you look at things that are thrown away, what's what's in the trash? You have to really, from our standpoint, um, look at whether there's an end market for that material, and can you justify going out and recycling that material? The cost of of getting it out of the waste stream. Mm -hmm. So is there um, a value to, to that material? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one answer. Um, from an environmental standpoint, you know, we have uh, a recycling rate in our state of 46%. And, mm. you know, some- Is that good or bad? It, it's, it's very good. Nationally, Minnesota has been, you know, right around number four, number in the top okay. four. So we're, we're doing really well. However, there's, you know, there is a desire uh, um, to get a much higher recycling rate than that. And so and what's holding us back from that? If 46% if is good mm -hmm. and people clearly are filling your guys' bins and stores, what is their infrastructure missing? What's missing to help us move from 46% higher? Well, I, I would say we need to get people engaged and we work at it. I think we have to come up with some new things to get them get people to understand the value of it, to get interested in it. And you know, I think it's, it's also a lot based on future generations and kids mm -hmm. and schools Absolutely. and working with schools. So I think um, that is really where you're gonna, you're gonna find uh, increased effort. And then again, just basic, make it easy, convenient, uh, single stream waste management does uh, single stream recycling where you put it all in one bin and people love it. Uh, it's easy and convenient and, and you get more material.
Captain, if you had the room, could you expand your store? Is the demand continue for the, that stigma of people kind of using things again, how we, gently using You know, we've had to make some policy changes, uh, and, I, and, and I know it was the Salvation Army in Albert Lee because I, uh, I run the Salvation Army there, but I think in, in general across the United States, um, there used to be this litany. You go to a thrift store and you'll see in the back door, we'll take this, but not this, this, and the, the list that they wouldn't take mm -hmm. would often cost more paint than the list that would take. Uh, so we've had to make some policy changes. Uh, we certainly can and have uh, expanded a lot of our recycling efforts. I think the big key with us, uh, now that we've made these policy changes, we're seeing a lot of the midnight shoppers that show up. Uh, last year there was a big news story in Rochester where they were dropping refrigerators off at the Salvation Army wow. uh, in the middle of the night. And mm. you know we have that too. And I, I do think that there's a place where we go over the yeah. top. Um, because although we can recycle that half can of used paint, uh, in your bin or in the back of my store is not the place to no. recycle that. And okay. so it, it is kind of a convenience, but I think it's a responsibility. I think that, that us as a community need to be responsible for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that if I drop a refrigerator off of the Salvation Army, I just saved 25 bucks by doing that, but right. the Army's now going to have to pay 25 bucks Cost to dispose you money of it. And stuff. So yep. there's a responsibility that goes with it. it we've been, uh, I'm 48 years old, and I think for as long as I can remember, we've talked about recycling. For as long as we've talked about the metric system, we've talked about recycling. <laughs> and, and it sounds like recycling has taken hold. Yep, it has taken hold. <laughs> I, I just think that uh, a lot of us just need to be a little bit more responsible with what we're doing. And, and think about, uh, you talked about the carbon footprint a little mm -hmm. earlier. Think about that in a, in a maybe even a smaller sense. What does that mean? Uh, to what's happening in your life right now. In your own community. All right, community. lots of good things to consider. Plenty of educational resources available from not only your organizations, but uh, in the public domain as well. Thank you so much for sharing your information with Thank us you. today. Appreciate Thank the you. Invite. households recycling their goods is impressive. Coming up next, Shaleen Codner from the Iowa Waste Exchange, Renee Bartling from the Landfill of North Iowa, and Mary Overly Olson from Steele County tell us about commercial recycling and what happens to all that stuff. Well, in our opening conversation, we've been talking about what things can be recycled and where people can put their recycling out on the curb or with some other uh, retail places, and that's primarily household, but recycling is really much broader than that. And I'm interested in finding out from this group a little bit more, not only about what happens to recyclables when they kind of enter the other side, but also commercial recyclables. And I'm interested in finding out if on the commercial side, we see a similar percentage of goods being recycled and not not entering uh, kind of the landfill waste stream? Well, honestly, Stephanie, in my opinion, it is. it really depends on the nature of the industry. Okay. Um, uh, for instance, um, cardboard mills use 100% recycled cardboard or paper in sure. the manufacturing of their products. There are certainly product uh, manufacturers out there that make nothing from recycled materials, but more and more businesses are realizing the advantages of that. They're also looking at their waste streams and discovering that, gosh, instead of landfilling my plastics, I could sell them to a market. Instead of paying for disposal, I could sell them to a market and make some money and um, it'd be a revenue source rather than uh, uh, expenditure for business. It could be a potential revenue source to um, take a look at your waste stream and, and kind of consolidate it into reduced waste. But it's also beneficial environmentally. There's a lot of extrapolated benefits of reducing your waste stream. Um, not only it can generate revenue, but it can save money from landfill costs. It can save money on raw materials. It saves money and emissions from transportation logistics, those type of things. The more local the outlet for recycling, the better because there are those supplemental um, environmental benefits. The landfill of North Iowa, for example, has some local programs with composting and um, some different uh, manufacturers, waste. Um, maybe Renee could talk about that a little bit. What are some of the kinds of things that you see? Well, we have a lot of um, wood construction, we call it clean wood waste that comes into our landfill. Okay. Um, what we do is we offer the program to 
companies and contractors, they can bring in their clean wood waste to us at a reduced cost. We chip that wood up and then we reuse it for landscaping and for animal bedding. Okay. How hard is it to find a secondary use for some things that show up at your place? Or do you have a list of only the things that you will accept? Well, we accept, of course, household hazardous waste. We don't want that going into our landfill. Right. Um, we have appliances that we recycle. The um, cardboard, we don't let that go into our landfill. Tires, we keep those out. And um, we do have a metal container also, so if somebody happens to bring in their garbage and they have some metal, they can divert that out mm -hmm. also. Okay. And the reason the landfills do this, we love recycling. We really do, because we want to reduce the amount of materials that go into our landfill. Mm -hmm. So that way, in the long run, it expands our life of the landfill. The lifespan of it, okay. Landfills are very costly to build and to maintain and uh, you need to monitor them for up to 30 years, maybe even more than that, after they're closed. So um, just from that aspect as well, saving landfill space is important. Recycling is not new. Um, it's something that's been around for quite some time, but it, it, kind of in the earlier days it was thought of, well, this is green and this is good for us, but it doesn't really pay in the end. It takes as much energy to process all of this than it would if we simply used virgin products. Is the industry mature enough now that that is no longer the case? Sustainability should really be driven by the economics. Um, it is much less costly to create manufacture a product from recycled materials than it is from virgin materials. Um, in forestry, for example, let's talk about paper. The recycled paper goes back to the mill and is processed, and you're eliminating virtually three st steps. You're eliminating all of the transportation involved in getting the new wood to the mill. You're eliminating hazardous emissions. You're eliminating, um, uh, there, there's just so many supplemental benefits to it that regardless if it's a wash, on the economic side, it's really not because there's all of these other benefits. But for the most part, it should be fully sustainable on its own. Just for a couple of statistics, when you recycle paper and make it into some new product, cardboard or paper, mm -hmm. um, you can save up to 55% uh, in energy use in the, uh, okay. to make the product. Mm -hmm. There's 95% uh, of the air pollution involved in making paper is reduced when you recycle it. And you reduce the water use by 60%. So that's paper alone. Um, mm -hmm. Aluminum is the, the big one. You save 95% of the energy when you make an aluminum can from a recycled can. I've read that we here in the U.S., even though our recycling rate for aluminum cans is approaching 60% now nationwide, um, we still throw away enough aluminum cans in our country to rebuild the entire U.S. air fleet every three months. Oh my goodness. That is an amazing statistic. Yeah. So we talk about the maturity of this industry and we're recycling more all the time. Besides kind of the economics, you guys have talked a lot about the numbers of it, it really pays these days to recycle and it's not a net loss anymore. I understand that recycling as an industry is actually quite a contributor to the local economy. Recycling creates jobs. Um, recycling creates a, a whole new uh, form of capital that um, we need to sustain in, especially in these economic times. So mm -hmm. it, yes, it is true. Um, I don't have any statistics regarding that, but there are some wonderful statistics, um, you know, out on the web regarding how recycling contributes to um, the economy. I do have just a, a few from the Environmental Protection Agency, the US EPA, mm -hmm. um, and they estimated that um, between nine, 2008 and 2030, um, if we, our recycling rate as a nation would get as high as 75%, which is it within reason if we add in composting mm -hmm. as part of that, we could create one and a half million more jobs here in the U.S. Wow. Wow. Um, so it's a, a big user uh, of a provider Huge economic of jobs. Driver. Yep. Just from the state of the Minnesota, $8.5 billion yes. in economic impact. Yes. Is some information that we garnered. So it really is a big deal, as important as other it industries. Is. Recycling is very important, but um, also in the waste management hierarchy. But um, we also look at waste reduction. Um, if we don't create it in the first place, then we don't have to find a place for it. We also look at reuse. And I know that you're going to look at some products here that were made out of reuse. But it's similar to our philosophy at home. You know, if we buy our clothes from a consignment or re someplace reused, we're going to be spending less. If we can conserve water, we're spending less. If we conserve energy, it, it's true. the same deal. Waste reduction is 
absolutely the first step in the waste management hierarchy. All right. What about new processes? As this industry continues to mature and find new technologies, what do you see on the horizon in terms of will there be new things that currently aren't, don't have a home in the recycling stream? Do you, do you see any new technology or new processes on the horizon that you think someday we'll be able to recycle just about anything? There are new businesses now that are beginning to convert plastics made into products back into oil. Uh, that's very wow. new and it's just more in the research and pilot project mm -hmm. stage, but that's a possibility. Um, I'd, I've been to several um, material sorting facilities in Minnesota and the new thing there is optical sorting. So. Um, uh, much of the glass that we recycle from our homes um, gets broken during the process mm -hmm. of transport and, and okay. uh, putting on the floor of the sorting facility. And uh, most markets, like Anchor Glass and Shakopee, needs a clear waste stream, or they need an all green waste stream, or all brown waste stream. Okay. Um, it's difficult then to provide that. However, the markets now, or the uh, MRFs, the Recycle Material Sorting Facility, have optical sorters. So if a little piece of brown glass comes along, it shoots it off on the left, and green glass, it shoots it off on the right, right. and clear glass goes oh, straight cool. down the conveyor belt. Right. Um, a new technology, a costly technology, but the um, big recyclers are investing in that because they see the potential there to reuse those materials. Mm -hmm. Now, Renee, you see a lot of things come into your place. What's on your wish list of what you would love to see recycled instead that is currently ending up in the landfill? Well, not so much recycled as composted. Our organic wastes are a very big part of our waste stream that goes into the landfill. Okay. And it would be great to come up with an industrial size solution to compost that out and take it out so of our waste like stream. So this restaurant waste, excess Home, food? Yep, industrial. Okay facilities even at the residential level. There's quite a bit of organic material that comes from that. All right. You gals have brought a few samples of things, you know, because one, one of the things that happens is sometimes people put their pop cans out on the curb and then they figure they're done. But there are many choices that people can make in terms of purchasing decisions that support this whole recycling process. And so you have brought a couple of items here. Let's take a look at I them. I think a real common one is uh, making carpet from recycled plastic bottles. Okay. And this is just one sample of that. Um, I've read that uh, 32 two liter pot bottles uh, go into one square yard of uh, recycled carpet. 32 pot bottles yeah. go into a square yard of carpet. Yes. And it feels like regular carpet. Feels like regular carpet. It wears better. It does not fade because the color is all the way through. Um, easy to clean. It's very common. If you have synthetic carpet now, I'm not surprised at all if part of it would be made oh, from okay. recycled plastic. Right. So a very common piece. Okay, what else do we have? Well, at the landfill of North Iowa, we have what an education center there, and mm -hmm. it was built in 2000. It was made out of as many reused, recycled, and energy efficient products as possible at that time. Okay. And one of the products that we used in there is what we call a pre-consumer recycled tile. Okay. Well, at this um, company, anything that was the wrong shape, size, color, got broke by accident, they ground it up and made it into this new recycled tile before anybody ever used it. Okay, and this education center, can people come in any time or do you hold specific classes to explain? Anybody's welcome to come visit any time okay. when we're open and I do educational programs. Um, if you have to have an hour after hours program, just give me a call and we'll work it out. Okay. Mary, what else have you got? A lot of items um, can be made from recycled tires. This is a, a floor mat, or doormat, I guess I should say, from recycled tires. Recycled tires are, are, tires are required to be recycled in Minnesota, and I presume in Iowa mm -hmm. as well. Um, so looking for other uses for that. Okay, and um, very decorative and colorful, and you yeah. know, sometimes we think recycle is drab. And Lots of uh, clothing is nowadays made okay. from recycled materials. This is made from 50% recycled soda pop bottles and 50% cotton. All right. A lot of landscape materials are also made from recycled plastic, which I think is probably the most interesting item to talk about products. Oh, okay. sure. This is a piece of landscape edging made in um, a company in uh, Worthington, I think, Minnesota. Okay. Um, 
when you see something that's black like that, it's pretty well assured that it's probably 100% recycled. Um, all materials, when you combine them together um, and recycle them, they tend to turn a grayish color, so they mm -hmm. probably added black to make okay. something like that. All right. And we um, see these all, all the time in landscaping around trees and sure, whatnot. Sure, sure. Okay. A lot of people um, don't think about paper uh, in recycling. Well, virtually all of the paper egg cartons that we have are made from recycled paper. There's a company in Moorhead, Minnesota that makes those from recycled paper. Okay. Cardboard is almost 100% nowadays made from recycled paper, either old cardboard or combination of paper and mm -hmm. cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at your cereal box or any other box, your um, um, cake mix box at home, you open it up and it's gray inside, that's a pretty good indication it's made from recycled paper. Okay, so it sounds like really there are quite a few products out there in the retail world that people can take advantage of. Same thing I'm assuming f in the commercial sector as well. If you are a business, you can purchase Absolutely. recycled products. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you ladies so much for coming in and, and sharing your expertise and giving us some great examples of recycled material. Thank Thanks. you. Recycling has certainly matured as an industry and there are new processes being developed every year, such as making pencils from blue jeans. As Renee mentioned, doing your best will help conserve resources, benefiting the entire waste stream process. I'm your host, Stephanie Passingham. Please join us next time on The Heart of the Matter, where we will continue to explore the issues that matter most to you. Thank you.